All right, Mark Rogers TV, the voice of college football, uh, striking up the live stream late on a Tuesday night to talk Arkansas football. And we not only have one, but we've got two contributors, two guests coming on here in the next several minutes to talk the Hogs. So we've got Andrew Hutchinson, who's joined us several times, giving us some great insight into Arkansas football from the Hog Beat. And uh, Andrew, how are you doing tonight? I'm doing good, Mark. How about you? I'm doing just fine. So Andrew and I experiencing some of those technical difficulties. And this is what happens, Andrew, all the time when people travel and they've got that hotel Wi-Fi. It becomes quite an issue. So we're hoping that Andrew hangs in here for us and we can talk some Arkansas football. So the first thought that I have is what does an Arkansas media day at SEC media days look like with Chad Morris running the show rather than Brett Bielema? Well, I think it's uh, a few less sound bites, as you could expect. I mean, it, it's a uh, uh, a coach that he's more uh, – Coach Morris is more of a cliché field guy. Oh, are you good? Yeah, I'm good. Go ahead. Oh, okay, good. Sorry. Um, but, uh, yeah, Coach Morris has a lot of clichés and sayings and everything that he uses, uh, whereas Coach Bielema, you, you just never knew exactly what Brett was going to say. I mean – uh, he was kind of a, a wild card. You never knew uh, he was going to say things that drew headlines and everything like that. You're not really going to get that from from Chad Morris, and that kind of proved uh, to, proved to be the case today. Uh, he said some good stuff, some interesting stuff, but probably nothing that's going to you know draw eyeballs from coast to coast like like uh, Brett Bielema did. So uh, it was it was a, it was a good, interesting uh, first taste from him. But I mean, he was pretty much the exact same guy we've seen on the Arkansas beat. Uh, since he was hired in December and that's a cliched uh, kind of coach you know he got his start at the high school level so as you can imagine uh, he's got those sayings that he's been saying for 20 or 30 years uh, since dating back to his high school days got Andrew Hutchinson on the line talking uh, Arkansas football at SEC media days from Atlanta you can join Andrew at uh, Hogbeat. Andrew um, quarterback that had to be the front and center narrative and asking who's going to start. Obviously, Chad Morris may know who's going to start, but he's not going to reveal that. So I'm guessing that was pretty much the standard line there. Yeah, pretty much. I mean, he was asked about it, you know, in many different ways. If it was, if he had a, a front runner, if he was going to name a starter, or if he, if it was going to be one of the, could be one of the freshmen. I mean, he asked every which way you can imagine, and uh, he pretty much gave the exact same answer uh, every time. He said that it's you know still an ongoing competition. Uh, he doesn't have a front runner at this time. Uh, he did. The only kind of nugget of news is that he would like to name a starter at some point during fall camp. Uh, so I guess you're not going to have a, a, a quarterback battle going up until the first snap of the first game on September 1st. Uh, so we are going to have a starter before that point. Uh, but he said there is no timeline. He doesn't have, you know, it could, we don't know if it's going to be after the first practice, after the first week of practice, or at the very end of practice. We're not exactly sure. Uh, but he does plan to, to name a starter at some point. Uh, he said that everyone is still, you know, an option even though right now it seems like Cole Kelly and Ty Story, the two older guys, are going to be the, the guys mainly competing. There are some fans that are hoping for maybe a Connor Nolan or a John Stephen Jones, one of the two freshmen, or maybe even a Dalton Hyatt, a redshirt freshman, uh, to get a shot. But uh, at this point right now, my educated uh, opinion is that it's going to be uh, Cole Kelly or, or Ty Story. But as I said, I mean, Coach Morris is, is very up in the air at this point. Time to talk some Arkansas football here at Mark Rogers TV, the voice of college football. Please like, comment, and subscribe to my YouTube channel. If you enjoyed the audio, go to Google Play, Podbean, iTunes, and Stitcher, and just search Mark Rogers TV. Andrew joins us uh, from Hogbeat. Uh, Andrew, um, what players attended media days? Was there a particular message that was sent by selecting those particular players? And anything interesting out of them today? There really wasn't any surprise on who the three players were. were. They were all three seniors, uh, kind of keeping up a tradition that uh, Brett Bielema set with always bringing seniors. Uh, you had Yelda Froholt on the offensive side. He's the uh, starting left guard. He's going to be one of the better offensive guards in the SEC this season, graded out really high last year and as one of the top ones coming back, according to Pro Football Focus. And, uh, and then there was on the defensive side, you had uh, Dre Greenlaw, a linebacker from Fayetteville. So he's a local kid. 
And then you also had a safety in Santos Ramirez, who's always a good quote. Uh, there wasn't really necessarily a particular message other than the fact that, you know, when everyone asks, you know, hey, Arkansas is expected to be picked, you know, sixth or probably seventh in the SEC West. You know, what do you think about that? They all pretty much said, hey, we were a four and eight team last year, so we understand it. We get where y'all are coming from, y'all being the media. But hey, we we've seen what's gone on behind the scenes. We see what the work we're putting in. We see the ca- uh, kind of talent we have in the locker room, and so we're we're out to prove people wrong, which is what you'd expect a team to say. Uh, you know, that's that's picked to finish last. They're not just going to say, oh yeah, well we're going to finish last. We've accepted that. So uh, I think it was a a, a pretty good. A representation all three of those guys are, are good quotes which you know as a as a member of the media we always appreciate a guy that isn't just gonna be a stick in the mud they were they were all colorful you know entertaining guys you know yelda froholt's a guy that uh Kay, he's originally from denmark uh so he, he's a guy that kind of was able to to give some perspective on you know what, what it was like you know coming over from denmark and now playing in the sec uh and, and evolving from a uh you know four-star defensive tackle coming out of the IMG Academy to now being a, a heralded potential, you know, top two or three round draft pick uh, next year in the NFL draft. So uh, it was, it was really good. And, and as I said, the, their main message was basically saying, you know, we, we understand what we were last year, but we are out to prove people wrong uh, this year. Did uh, Chad Morris give any insight into just were you able to read his optimism for this season, for this particular team? Did, did there seem to be much concern? Obviously, as you mentioned, the, the expectations are low, the talent level, not where it needs to be to compete seriously in the sec Western division, but could you kind of read between the lines in regards to him feeling good about working with his team or really being seriously concerned? Well, I mean, it's really kind of hard to read Chad Morris because he's a really <laughs> optimistic guy. I mean, he I don't know if I've ever seen him not smiling. He's always kind of got that upbeat attitude. And, uh, I mean, he's he's always hopped up on Red Bull, as he likes to say. Uh, so it's really kind of hard to get a read from him. Uh, however, I thought one really good comment and good telling uh, thing I've got from one of the players, Santos Ramirez, was – you know, I think our, you know, I've, I've had conversations with you before and I think that Arkansas' uh, defense is actually pretty good talent-wise across the board on the first team, on the first unit. Where they're going to run into issues is the second unit. I'm not exactly sold on it, but uh, Santos Ramirez, I asked him about that. Santos said, hey, I've been here for this is my fifth year and this is as deep as I've seen it. This is the best depth, the first time I felt comfortable with the depth we have behind the starters. And so... I think that was kind of a, a telling thing for me and that uh, these t- these guys are optimistic that they're they're going to be better uh, than the preseason projections indicate. Got uh, Andrew Hutchinson on the line from Hogbeat uh, talking up Arkansas football. We are only halfway through SEC media days as they do it bigger and better in the SEC than anywhere across the country. The SEC and the Big 12 kicked off on Monday. It's a two-day affair for most of the conferences in the SEC. They go four full days, so it's three teams per day with a few four team uh, slices in there as well with the hogs going with Chad Morris and his first SEC media days. Anything else that you could gather, uh, Andrew, when it comes to the, the, the narrative of the conference. So for example, I was able to lock into big 12 media days yesterday and, and we know that the league has had an issue in trying to uh, enter teams into the college football playoff. It's kind of assumed in the sec Also, the Big 12 loaded at quarterback, typically losing a ton there, Will Greer, and then a bunch of guys that need to prove themselves. There were certain narratives uh, around uh, the the media discussions there in the Big 12. Um, For the SEC this year, what what do you think are the storylines? What are you talking to people about? Well, it's kind of hard to say uh, because, well, for, honestly, to be on, uh, to be honest with you, I've actually only really paid attention to Arkansas's day to day. I actually came to Atlanta a few days early and made it somewhat of a vacation, so I did not even watch any of the SEC media days yesterday. Uh, however, I think one thing that a storyline that I've kind of been interested in hearing people's opinions on, and this isn't just in the SEC but across the country, but is the is the new rule that the NCAA enacted with uh, the freshmen being able to play four games and maintain their redshirt eligibility. Uh, Chad Morris went into depth with it today, saying how, uh, you know, those those freshmen in the past, you, you know, you, you don't really have any, you know, when you've been basically told you're going to redshirt, you don't have any reason to, 
to really work hard and practice and stay in tune in meetings and, and film study and stuff like that. You kind of, you know, zone out, but now there's that possibility of, Hey, maybe I can get to play for four games. And if it goes well, keep playing. And so you see that with, you know, all the positions, but, you know, an intriguing one for Arkansas, as we talked about is quarterback position. When you got two freshmen, you know, maybe you get to see what they look like, you know, late in blowouts early in the season, or maybe if it's not going well and they haven't played at all for the last four games, give them a shot. And so uh, I think that was really interesting. And, and again, Santos Ramirez, as you can tell, he was one of my favorite guys to talk to. Uh, but uh, he, he said that, you know, when he was a freshman and he redshirted, uh, he did not have a good mental approach and that he really wasted his redshirt year and really regrets that because he could have gained something from it. And he said that if this rule had been enacted when he was a freshman five years ago, that uh, he really would have benefited from it and it would have helped him. And who knows, it could have made him even better than what he is now, which is an all SEC caliber safety. So uh, I, I really think that that rule is, is an intriguing one that I've been kind of, you know, anxious to see the impact of it once, uh, once the season rolls around. The NCAA enacting a rule that uh, favors and benefits the student athlete. Maybe the NCAA is turning over a new leaf and maybe we're seeing a new era of the NCAA because typically it's the student athlete that gets least consideration or last consideration in many of these decisions. But uh, it's good to see that the student athletes, because the coaches do get into an issue once they get close to postseason play in regards to being able to play or not play particular players in certain situations and burn that year of eligibility. And it's something that they'll be able to test that player, get them some exposure, some, some meaningful reps without burning that season uh, because it really weighs into the numbers and football we know is an attrition sport. And that has to be a big consideration right there. We got uh, Andrew Hutchinson on the line from Hogbeat. Uh, Andrew, we know that you've got a ton to do to pretty much survey what you've taken in at uh, SEC Media Days on the Arkansas side today and have to uh, deliver that for your uh, readership and uh, so forth. So we appreciate you jumping online. Would obviously love to have you back sometime during a uh, summer camp to get us set for the uh, 2018 season there in uh, Fayetteville. Absolutely. I look forward to it. Ha have me on anytime. Excellent. We appreciate it, Andrew, and I'm going to keep going so you can just click right out of there and uh, we will stay in touch, sir. All right. Appreciate it. Looking forward to it. Thanks, Andrew. This is, uh, of course, Mark Rogers TV, the voice of college football. We've got a bit of a live stream started here on Facebook, but just uh, kind of testing that out and need to develop that. So if you want to see the real live stream, just go to YouTube. And so I should be telling these people here, just go to YouTube at Mark Rogers TV or it's simply markrogerstv.com, the voice of college football. And you get the audio if you don't want to look at me. I'm sure you don't mind looking at my guests, but if you don't want to look at me, then you go and uh, you search Mark Rogers TV at either Google Play, iTunes, Podbean, or Stitcher, and then you just listen to the audio. So we're going to have Trey Schapp on from 103.7 The Buzz there in Little Rock, Arkansas. So we are blowing out Arkansas football. Yes. Miami fans, Alabama fans, Ohio State fans, LSU fans, all the other fans that I see lined up on the chat. We are talking Arkansas football with more than one contributors. That's just the way the schedule went tonight. One and seven in the SEC. Five and seven, maybe four and eight. I think Andrew said four and eight last season, but we're going Arkansas. They blow out of Hogs football and really not playing anyone in the non-conference this season. I hate to see that, but I think this is uh, the year that was kind of voided because of Michigan backing out of a game. And so that's a bit difficult. I will join the live chat and see what you guys have. And we are waiting for uh, Trey to join us from 103.7 The Buzz there in Little Rock. Dondre, Chad Morris helped make Clemson a power and Dondre, that was one of the points that I actually made in rating the SEC coaches. Not that I gave Chad Morris a high ranking at this point. It's impossible to rank him at the Power 5 level as a head coach. But in looking at his run at Clemson, they were 15 and 12 or 19 and 15, barely over 500 football team when he first started running the offense. And quickly, they became a 42 and 11 team over the next four seasons or so as they transitioned from pretty marginal program there in the late 2000s, that first 
uh, decade of the 2000s into a top 10 or 15 program, and now they've taken another leap forward to what we see now. All right, uh, hopefully this works out tonight since we are lining up two particular guests on the same subject. I'll just keep the live stream going and uh, waiting for Trey Schapp from 1037 The Buzz to join us. All right, I see some Alabama talk possibly in the line. Uh, Crimson and White 17 with nothing against Arkansas. I wouldn't expect you to have anything against Arkansas. Arkansas, when is the last time Arkansas beat Alabama? I'm sure, it's been quite some time. I can't come up with that game off the top of my head. What else do you guys have going on here tonight? If uh, you have yet to see on the channel, we uh, went, I uh, guess we could say hog wild since we are talking Arkansas tonight. Hog wild on Monday with Texas, Oklahoma State, TCU. We brought on our Big 12 guy from the LGG to talk about the entire conference. Then we also had Will Gunter on from um, 107.5 The Game to talk up Texas A&M and LSU. Will's going to join us later this week as well. And again, this could be a little bit dicey with uh, more hotel Wi-Fi working against us uh, as we await Trey Shap and I had to move the phone there to see when Trey may or may not join us. We just have a handful of people on the chat right now. So we've got the faithful few, about uh, seven or eight watching right now on YouTube. Of course, um, we will have the ACC uh, at the podium. This is coming up Wednesday night. Wednesday night and Thursday will be ACC football coverage with uh, the boys from the 14 schools in the ACC going to the uh, ACC media days or whatever they call it there. It's media days for all the conferences, but they've got a special name for it in the ACC, the ACC kickoff, I believe. They're in Charlotte on Wednesday and Thursday. And of course, we will continue our coverage from the Big 12. And whatever we don't get to the day of, we will certainly hit later in the week. We've already hit what TCU, Texas, Oklahoma State uh, covered uh, from a big top picture view the rest of the big 12 and then texas a&m and lsu and just got some arkansas from our guy andrew hutchinson and he will probably post that video as he has in the past to uh his site there with uh and i don't want to mess this up because i believe andrew was with 247 sports now he's with rivals and i hope i didn't mess that up because they're rivals if you know uh college football websites between 247 Sports and Rivals, especially when it comes to recruiting. And Andrew has made uh, uh, a position change there, and we appreciate him coming on board because he's got he's to cover the entire day and deliver that uh, for his uh, readership. So again, we are waiting uh, Trey Shep, so you guys can keep me company uh, here on the live chat. Whatever you guys have for the rest of the week. Uh, we will be announcing here in the next few days uh, the winner of our first Mark Rogers TV contest. We will announce that winner. Maybe that person's actually on the chat. I don't see them right now, but we're going to announce the winner. But I wanted to have Zoe on since he is sponsoring it and was so generous to give up time, effort, consideration more than anything, just to think for a guy that's trying to build his own platform, his own YouTube channel, and uh, his own brand, and for him to offer up his merchandise, uh, quality stuff too, for the first Mark Rogers TV contest was, I just thought, phenomenal. I can't thank the guy enough, and I wanted to have him on live as we announced the winner. Uh, next time, we're going to have a certain minimum requirement of subscribers that need to be brought to Mark Rogers TV to win that prize. So I'm not going to diminish the accomplishment of the winner who brought the most subs to Mark Rogers TV between June 15th and July 15th. And um, as you guys know, you guys make it all happen. And uh, one of the numbers that uh, really jumps out to me that I've told a lot of people here recently is 1300 comments here into the channel the first half of last year and over 17,000 comments to the channel 
over the first six months of this year, 1,300 to 17,000. And out of the 17,000, 9,000 plus came in during the month of June. So thank you. Let's see what you guys are talking about on the chat. It's not going to cooperate with me. So later this week, I will pull up uh, the schedule here because I am uh, not having any luck getting to uh, where we stand in the chat right now. Having uh, computer issues with my laptop number two. I need some uh, computer upgrades here at Mark Rogers TV. Two laptops, not enough. Two laptops and a phone going at the same time, not enough. We need something else. We need more reliable laptops, I guess. My MacBook Air that I've had, it's been a trusty, trusty uh, purchase from back in probably 2011 or 12. It's um, seen better days. It has seen better days. So uh, I am not able to get to the bottom of the, the chat. Let's at least tell you what we've got coming up the rest of the week scheduled thus far. Again, if I can get there, this is crazy. All right. We are going to shut down for now. See where we stand with Trey Schaap from 103.7 The Buzz. And we've got a lot of great stories with Trey. I don't know if we'll tell them tonight, but Trey Schaap was one of my original first cameramen at WCBI. WCBI, yeah, not WNCO, WCBI in Columbus, Mississippi. And Trey and I went to NCAA tournaments and bowl games and SEC championship games and final fours together. And it was, uh, we had a big time. And now Trey is a uh, drive time, I believe, drive time talk show host, uh, sports talk show host there in Little Rock at uh, 103.7 The Buzz. And we've had him back a number of times to talk but he's busy, so we we rarely get him. So I was excited tonight to get Trey from Atlanta at the SEC Media Days. So I'm going to shut everything down, see where we stand with Trey, and I will be back soon. And I'm actually seeing uh, Trey sending me a message. So we're going to shut things down, see where Trey stands, and hopefully we'll be back. Uh, folks on YouTube, I will definitely be back with some sort of live stream, whether I've got Trey or not. We will talk college football a little bit later tonight in the next 10 to 15 minutes with you. Thanks for joining me on Facebook, whoever's watching that I can't see from this distance. And uh, again, thanks to you. And we will see you soon.